Hello, this is part two of the guide to Dwarf Fortress. If you're watching from the previous video, then it's later than intended because I spent two whole days just playing the game a lot to make sure what I'm going to say is correct and check for what new things have changed. Um, and it was more than expected. Uh, and so, as a result of having to re-record the embark screen, I'm going to have to embark in a slightly different spot. Just, you know, right here. Not much of a difference. So these settings are new, or the difficulty, like normal and hard thing is new, but these settings are not. These have been, uh, I believe they were in the D init folder before. They're not exactly like a difficulty setting like other ones. I'll show you like, if I set, so this is at uh, 20, 50, 80, 5,000, 25,000. If I set it to hard, it'll be smaller, 15, 30, 40, 2,500, 1,200, or 12,500. This is just a, it affects how early enemies attack you and how early they increase the strength of their attack. So like, if, you know, compared to normal mode on hard, you're effectively treated as twice as strong for your production trigger, at least in population trigger goes earlier as well. It's not like you'll be fighting harder enemies. I mean, you kind of will be for, like, relative to what point in the game you're at. Uh, I mean, obviously, for the first time, I guess you'd, you'd want it to be on normal, or even off, which is just, uh, you don't, can't get attacked by these things. You can't even have curious wilderness creatures to cause trouble, apparently. <laughs> and, and that would be easier, and that could help you learn, like, everything except for the military for when you need to do that and then later you turn it on. I, I wouldn't recommend playing without it for that much time. Uh, I don't think the military is too difficult and you'd be like missing a big part of the game so you could try with it off. The economy setting is a little bit weirder. That one relates to these economy population triggers here uh, and this one hard makes it higher and I don't exactly know which ones they do. The only thing I know that it affects is that trade, it affects when your allies would see you as being more productive and worthy of bigger caravans. Okay, and it also affects these landholder production triggers, but I think... Huh, okay, it multiplies it by five, that's a little bit weird. Because uh, I was going to mention that landholders are actually uh, bad. You actually don't want these, and so when you set this to hard, this makes them appear later, which makes it easier. <laughs> and I told us it's like, you'll get a, a noble assigned to your fort. You assign them from within your fort, like they'll become the baron or whatever fort you've made, and they'll make demands and be annoying, <laughs> and so you, you don't want them. That's a little bit weird. Ah, though hard, um, De decreases the mandate period and the demand period, which means you'll get in more demands. It says more is fewer. So the nobles, you, when you do get them, will be demanding more. So that's a, a definitive difficulty aspect. Now the embark screen itself. We have the dwarves, the items, and the animals. You can buy items and animals with embark points. And one of the changes is that the dwarves don't cost embark points. You used to uh, cost points to get skills, but as you see it's 544 before and after I increased it. So that means the skills you want to assign will be a little bit different from what I'm used to. I've already, you know, figured out what I think would make sense, um, but I haven't necessarily tested all of it for the many hours I've tested my other setups. So with the starting dwarves, the skills you're going to need, you're going to need a miner, Oh, that's very important. They're going to be a dedicated miner, so you don't really need any other They're going to be mining their whole life, so I, in the past I wouldn't give them any other skills. But since they're free, I'll be giving them the dodger skill, uh, because miners actually, along with the skill for mining speed, it's the skill for fighting with a pickaxe. Um, and so actually, a, a skilled miner can be a very powerful fighter, uh, and that, but dodger will help them survive if they get into a fight. And they might, when they're mining down, like, in the caverns, they might get attacked by a forgotten beast and immediately get set on fire and die. That's what happened in my test game. 
but uh, if it, it wasn't a fire-based beast, their dodging skill could have helped them survive a lot. Five points is pretty significant in Dodger. You also want a woodcutter, but uh, when I started playing, it would be a basically dedicated woodcutter, but in the time since then, woodcutting's been sped up a lot. It was a while ago, I'm used to it by now, just mentioning. Um, and so you need a secondary skill for them. And I'm not completely sure about what's best, but I think planter would make sense. It's the main farming skill. And it's kind of a low intensity job that you still want, so it won't interrupt their woodcutting. They'll just go to farm when, you know, you have another farmer when you need one. And speaking of, I guess you will want a dedicated farmer, who I also like to give herbalist, uh, which is the skill for gathering plants from the ground if you're in a place with a normal amount of uh, plants. This is a lot of freely available food from the very beginning. So what you do with them is assign them to gather plants at the beginning, and once you have the space set up for a farm, have them start farming. And they can still gather plants when they're not farming. Again, farming typically doesn't take up their entire time. And then uh, the other two skills I'm going to mention, you can look, you can view the dwarves, then look at their personality and see a few of their attributes. And these affect the different jobs. Now, I don't, I'm not going to suggest looking at them for every single job, like trying to find the best match for the miner and the woodcutter and the farmer. Because for a lot of jobs, it doesn't matter much. It just affects like the speed that it goes at, and that isn't too important. But for crafting jobs, it, it does actually matter because you'll get higher quality items crafted by them. And so, if we look at this one, she has good creativity and good uh, sense of the position of her own body. I think those are both helpful for crafting. I'm going to get a table of it on screen from the wiki, show a few of them. Uh, the main of the starting skills, the relevant ones you want like to maybe look for attributes for. Oh, it's not Mason. <laughs> I was about to make that mistake. One of the changes, a very strange one, Mason's up here with the most important skills, you know, the top four skills. They moved almost everything Mason actually does to Stone Carver. I don't know why. I don't know what Mason still does. I've tried to find it in like a 10 year fort. My Mason never increased their skill. <laughs> you actually want Stone Carver as the most important one, all the way down here, hidden at the bottom with like the almost irrelevant, like, woodcrafter skill. And then you'll also want a carpenter, though I don't consider carpenters as important. Um, but, you know, they've got good creativity, poor spatial sense, but sure, I'll take it. They can be the carpenter. Now what should their other skill be? That, I don't really know for sure, because these two should just be spending their whole lives doing their singular job. Um, and giving them anything else would, you know, distract them from it. So my best idea is just also giving them Dodger, because it is helpful for survival if they get attacked. That can help them survive, whereas they don't want to be doing anything else. For the Woodcutter, it could be helpful to give them combat skills if they get attacked by a wild animal. Um, woodcutter doesn't help them in combat like Miner does. And, you know, I suppose Planter isn't a very skill-intensive job, and neither is Woodcutter, so I'm gonna throw some points into Axe Dwarf and Dodger, so if they get attacked by a wild animal, they'll be safer. And then you're going to want a Brewer, because as I mentioned, all dwarves are alcoholics, so they're gonna need somebody to brew that. And then I also like to give them Cook, the other food preparation skill. The last one isn't as essential as the others, comparatively. So the other one I like to be an animal handler. So that's... Animal trainer is the most relevant skill. I used to give them animal caretaker, but it is literally a useless skill. It's non-functional. Don't give them animal caretaker. Uh, and I guess... Tanner... And... Oh, Butcher's been put into Crucial. Okay, unlike the others. So... It's not a critical job, but I like to have somebody that I know is going to do it, and it's like, it's low skill, so 
you know, unlike the others, the skill points don't matter much, which is why it's not great to bring them, but there's not much else that I think you need to bring. So like combat skills, unless you're going into like an evil biome, I'd recommend against combat skills because they'll probably spend a long time doing nothing. And the skill's not that valuable anyway because you can just train you can train the first like five skill levels of a military skill really quickly. You just train the military skill in general quite quickly. So the points also don't matter much there. The other category is almost all useless stuff. I mean, the healthcare skills are useful, but it's going to be a while until you really need those. And of the remaining crucial skills, the only ones, there's like gem cutter and gem setter, which are just for money. Uh, stone and wood crafter, which are also almost only for money. And then weapon and armor smith, which is actually important. Uh, but I like to instead wait for somebody to arrive who's even better at weapon and armor smith than my embarking dwarves, because it's actually it's, that's the highest skill jobs. Because the resources are much more limited than any other job, and the effects are much more important than any other job. The higher quality weapons are a lot more than just value; they're effective, better, and so you can get a better dwarf than just the ones you have embarking with you. And it'll take a bit of time until you're actually ready. You have the metal smithing industry ready to start smithing, and so they'll just be doing nothing for a very long time. So instead, I just focus on something I think I will need relatively early on. Now for the items, uh, I'm going to... <laughs> for the items, a lot of the starting ones aren't necessary. I don't think the pigtail cloth is really necessary. Uh, seeds are important. Uh, plump helmet spawn are the most valuable. Plump helmets are a very good crop. Uh, pigtails are for cloth. Cave wheat, sweet pods, and rock nuts all need to be processed and then cooked before they can be eaten. And dimple cups are only used to produce dye and so are absolutely useless. Uh, <coughs> so it takes some extra plump helmet spawn to make sure I have enough and then the others, like when I need them, I'll slowly grow them up. You do need the anvil. Uh, you do need the battle axes and the picks. Uh, you don't necessarily need two, but they're not that expensive and it's safer to have the two. And you might get a, another tour if you want to do those jobs. It's good to bring some drinks to start with, some food to start with, but uh, you can save a little bit of points by replacing the plump helmets. Because they used to cost four points, uh, when, but when a plump helmet is eaten, you can get one or two seeds. So it's a small point save to get rid of the plump helmets and then buy seeds and meat with that points instead. I don't really bring bags with me often, but thinking about it, they might actually be helpful to bring at the start. Thread you don't really need to bring at the start because it's for crafting stuff. You don't like the cloth before, it's for crafting stuff, which is like a whole cloth industry that can take them more time to set up. Ropes barely needed for anything, quivers only needed for hunting. and you can take a long time until you get that. Buckets can be made by a carpenter in like 10 seconds. Splints made by a carpenter in 10 seconds. All of these, the wooden ones absolutely don't bring the cloth, like maybe. Because the wooden things can just be immediately built by a carpenter, uh, which you bring with you. Uh, cloth here, I normally don't bring one with me because it takes a while to grow my own cloth. But for what I would recommend bringing with you, you need to look at the stone category and find coal. Yes, for only three points, you get an entire block of bituminous coal, which is worth um, eight fuel once you process it. Each point of fuel is needed for smoking one ore, forging one item, and you need a lot of it to make steel. I don't know the exact number, of it, but it's a lot more. So bring some coal. <laughs> like if you're not, if your park site doesn't have any, which you don't, won't really know whether or not it will. Uh, having a gigantic stockpile of coal from the beginning is very valuable. You don't need to get 100, but you can get 100. I mean, it didn't cost, you know, 300 out of a thousand points. Sure. Um, and you can also bring other ores if you want. So if you're embarking at a place that didn't have iron, um, then you'd want to bring an iron ore. There are three of them. Hematite, 
limonite and magnetite, wherever that one is. So they're more expensive, but if we compare that to a metal bar, so an iron bar costs 50 points, the ore costs half of that, and each rock of an ore gives you four iron instead of just one. So it's a lot more efficient to buy the ore. If you were going to bring any metal, you should be buying the ore instead of the metal. Um, unless you like are immediately going to set up a blacksmith, which would be a pretty strange thing to do. The rest of the points can go into animals. I'd say there's four categories to the animals. Uh, dogs, cats, birds, and other mammals. I guess I'm going to start with the other mammals, because that's kind of easier to talk about. The other mammals uh, can almost all be milked. Uh, I guess rabbits and cavies cannot be milked. Uh, they're very small and I guess very cheap, but they're not very useful. So you want to get a bigger one. And to be specific, uh, sheep are kind of the meta pick. You want like the best one. Bring some sheep. So what you get from the mammals, you get meat, leather, I guess bone, milk, and from some of them you can get wool. From sheep, sheep, llamas, and alpacas you can get wool from. You'll notice sheep are cheaper, you can get more of them. Uh, llamas don't produce any more wool, or alpacas don't. Um, I mean, you could still take those if you wanted instead, it isn't that big of a... The efficiency here isn't too important. And then also notable are pigs, which can be milked, but also don't need to graze. Different animals need to graze different amounts, vaguely based on how big they are. This limits how many you can have, and you need a, good, a big space to keep them in. However, pigs don't need to graze, so if you want to practice, you know, dwarven battery farms, I guess you can just lock a bunch of pigs in a hole in the ground and get plenty of them. Uh, but they won't give you wool, which sheep will. Now mentioning pigs, uh, one of the notable things about dogs and cats is that they also don't need to graze. And despite being carnivores, they don't need to eat meat either. So they're kind of free, right? I mean, grazing isn't like expensive, but you need to get a space for them. Dogs you can just have anywhere. Cats you can just have anywhere. So dogs are a little bit similar to pigs, though they can't be milked. And you can also train them for hunting or for war. War dogs will attack enemies. You can use them to like guard the entrance of a fortress to see if anybody tries to sneak in. You can get thieves, uh, and war dogs will be able to detect to detect them. Hunting dogs help hunters. I don't know how useful they are. I don't think I've ever used them. Uh, they're if you do want one, just buy the dog and then train it. Uh, especially if you brought an animal trainer with you, that's what the skill is for. Animal trainer is also for training wild animals. That you can catch and domesticate. You can potentially domesticate some pretty crazy animals if you get, uh, if you manage to catch them in a cage trap, and you have a good animal trainer. The skill does affect your ability to train exotic animals. Then cats are very different. Uh, the thing about cats is that any other animal can be designated as available to become a pet, and then dwarf can take that whenever they feel like it. Cats, however, you cannot designate them be available as a pet, they will decide if they are available as a pet. Um, which in the past could cause problems because all cats would become pets and then you couldn't butcher them and they just their population would just keep growing and you couldn't really do anything about it. Uh, but there are actually ways around that now you can separate the male and female cats or geld them. Uh, so that isn't actually the problem anymore. So what you do get cats for is they hunt vermin. Now, supposedly vermin will like deplete your food stockpiles and maybe make it rot faster, but I, 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 I have no. The difference isn't noticeable to me because food is really easy, and so I'll have a gigantic stockpile of food, whether or not I have cats. And I mean, maybe the vermin are reducing the size of it, but I can't even notice it because I have so much. And more annoying than the vermin is having to dump their corpses into your refuse pile. So, I don't know. I mean, you can bring cats, and they can be fine. They're fine. The last category is birds, which are a lot, are all very cheap. It's a little bit surprising. 
Uh, you don't get much meat from birds or bones. You can actually get leather from the larger ones. I think like all except ducks and uh, one of the others. But what birds do is they lay eggs uh, and then you collect the eggs and you can cook them into food. This increases the reason to bring somebody with a cooking skill because there are several food items that can only be eaten when they're cooked into food. They can't be eaten raw, so eggs can't be eaten raw. Um, and as I mentioned, various crops can't be eaten raw. Now, eggs uh, are a pretty good food source. You do get a lot of them. Uh, I don't use them most of the time because it's annoying when you want the eggs to hatch. You build a nest box for each one, they go and lay their eggs in it, and then you need to either put it behind a door that you then lock, or you need to forbid the eggs to stop your dwarf from taking them. It's just a little bit annoying. They don't, like, reproduce on their own. You have to go out of your way to do it. But they are a good food source. So while I don't use them, there's nothing wrong with them. They're, they're quite good. And I'll bring some for tutorial purposes. Uh, I'm going to show a chart from the, the wiki here showing kind of the best analyzing the different types of animals and like how much you know can't how many eggs they typically lay how many i don't think i need 10 turkeys they're really cheap though i could easily would get 10 turkeys so you might as well you know well the downside to turkeys is that they take two years to grow to adulthood instead of just one so if you're like butchering them butchering them for leather they'll be worse and then i'm gonna get some more sheep uh, and here's a chart from the wiki on the mammals and the different things they can do so, you know, it, it is kind of like the, the woolly ones are like the meta pick. If you want the best animal, get some sheep. But y you don't need to get the best one. I was a big fan of getting water buffalo just because they're a pretty dwarven kind of animal, right? Like, big and hairy, <laughs> you know? Uh, so I think they're fun to have. And there's a lot of... Uh, a lot of animals available, so you know, you can just choose a fun one, and that's not gonna be, they're not gonna be anything wrong with that. Well, except you do kind of, it is kind of good to have wool available, but you can, you know, reduce the amount of sheep and then go bring some water buffalo. Uh, I'm just gonna bring sheep for tutorial purposes, it's a little bit easier. <laughs> um, and then the uh, last step, or the first, first step if you wanted, uh, you can name the fortress. So it's a little bit of a weird interface. Uh, that's because uh, the four races in the game have their own languages. And so there has to be this dictionary that's defined. And so you can only have certain words available. So, you know, we have Abbey. Um, we can randomize it. Key Lancers, Whisker Guilds. And that's kind of a fun name. Sure. And the group name... Uh, I got a really fun one last time. I got a really fun one last time. Uh, so I'm gonna use the search bar to find guild. And then... Okay, so... Of accident. <laughs> that was my randomly generated one. And I, my first one, I was just really happy with that one. So I've got the guild. Actually, if I name them this... The one to the south will have the same name. So let's not do the same one. We'll be, the, we'll be the, a very legally distinct <laughs> guild of terrors. I was going for errors, you know, any synonym of accident, but there we go. And there's this weird, I'll, I'll do a, um, show what you what, happen, what it looks like if you fill every category, right? Whisker Guilds, the Ageless Angelic Arch Ancient of Ale. You know, you've got these parts, those names that you can put together, and then you clear them. You can randomize each one, I guess. The impure, mortified, impure azure of grooved. <laughs> sure. Uh, we'll keep Whisker Guilds, the Guild of Terrors. Then you also have a group symbol. Um, so this is not also not important, but and it's a little bit complicated. So you can you can just end the video here if you want because they're they're a bit weird. But you can I thought dragon there that's a good idea. So you you get items. Historical figures will be full of bad ones. So um, if you've read through legends and know like 
those things about the world, you can choose significant historical figures if you like search through here. Um, you can get Avon Diamond Ruff and Arrow Bamboo. And a blazing sun. And an acacia tree. <laughs> and a book called The Humans Came a Full Circle. And then you can define a relationship between them. So you can have Avond Diamond Ruff admiring the arrow bamboo. <laughs> and then we can have Avond Diamond Ruff being shot. <laughs> and then we can have, have, it, have the dragon being tortured. And we can have the blazing sun burning that the book, The Humans Came Full Circle. And we can have the dragon cooking the arrow bamboo. Um, and my favorite one's all the way at the bottom, I think. Um, and where is it? Here it is. Smeared out into a spiral. <laughs> Um, the acacia smeared out into a spiral. Um, so, you, you can make meaningful things here. Uh, it's, it's a bit of a strange system, but you can... <laughs> you can also do very ridiculous things. Um, so, <laughs> the book looks confused. <laughs> so, you know, maybe consider uh, taking a look at this and coming up with something fun for your fortress. And you can name it as well, apparently. The Inferno of Wire. Okay, I guess. So that's just kind of fun. And I think that's everything. I'm going to be embarking now. Yeah.